Today I'm brewing a New England IPA and the remit here is to get this thing done quick, but to get it done good. I'm planning on drinking this beer this time next week. Let's do it. My name is Martin Keane and on this channel, The Homebrew Challenge, I'm working my way through brewing 99 different beer styles in 99 weeks. Now, New England IPA is not on my list of 99 beers, but I could not resist brewing one up because this is a beer that is both great to drink, but also challenging to brew. Now this is that hazy beer that's really juicy and it's very restrained in its hop bitterness but very much fruit forward in its hop character. And let's talk about the ingredients that go into the grist to making this. So we're looking to build a fairly neutral palette here because what we're looking to accentuate is the hops. But we also want to add in some high protein malts, so wheat and oats, to really help with the mouthfeel of the beer and also for the haze stability. Now I'm going to build a beer here around 1066 original gravity, so we're looking at about a 6% beer. My base malt is two row malt and that makes up 52% of the grist. Then 15% of the grist is flaked barley and then 11% each of aromatic malt, carafoam for the head retention and 11% of white wheat malt. Now I typically don't make much of a big deal about water salts and water chemistry but I do think it's worth pointing out here for this beer style. Now typically an IPA you want a high sulfate ratio and that's to emphasize hop bitterness but with New England IPA actually you want a high chloride ratio so chloride to sulfates and in my five gallon or 19 liter batch I am using a lot of this calcium chloride to achieve that so my water salts are 10 grams of calcium chloride and then two grams of Epsom salt and two grams of gypsum and also to address the mash pH this doesn't have many roasted malts in it so we need to drive down that pH I am using four milliliters of lactic acid. And I'm mashing here at 152 Fahrenheit, 67 Celsius, for about an hour. While that's mashing, it's time for a coffee break. If you have a nitro tap as part of your homebrew setup, I can highly recommend using it to serve nitro cold brew coffee. It's the perfect tonic for these early morning brew days. Now while this is draining behind me here and I'm preparing for boil, let's talk a little bit about hops. Everything I'm going to use in terms of hops is going to either be Centennial, Amarillo or Galaxy. Now generally with New England IPAs you really want to favour late edition hops, so in the Whirlpool or in dry hopping and not too many in the kettle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boil for only 30 minutes and I'm going to add in here one charge of Centennial. This is one ounce of Centennial which I'll throw in at 30 minutes and that's all I'm doing for bittering hops.
Okay, that is 30 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Now, the next hop addition is the Whirlpool hop addition. And what I've got here is one ounce each of Centennial and Galaxy and Amarillo. And I want to Whirlpool this at a little bit less than boiling temperature. So I'm gonna bring the temperature down to about 180 Fahrenheit or 82 Celsius, and then add these hops in to steep for about 20 minutes. And just by lowering that temperature, I should be able to pull out a little bit more flavor from these hops. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna run my plate chiller just for a second to get this temperature down a few degrees. Now I don't really have any sort of whirlpool setup with this, but what I have done is I've just got the pump recirculating and then I'm just gonna give this a stir as well just to keep all of the liquid flowing through here and running over the hops. Now let's talk about the speed aspect of this beer, how we're gonna turn it around in a week. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to ferment it in this Firmzilla, which is a pressurized fermenter which can hold up to 35 PSI of pressure. And by fermenting under pressure, I can not have to worry too much about the temperature that I ferment at, so it can be a little bit warmer than normal, which will speed things up. And also it will carbonate the beer while it's fermenting. So another bit of a time saver. Now, there are two things with fermentation in a New England IPA, which are a little bit contradictory. One is New England IPA seems to be quite susceptible to cold side oxidation. If you get the beer oxidized, it can really dullen the flavor of these hops and also lead to a darker color beer. But you also need to add a bunch of dry hops into this beer and adding in the dry hops introduces the chance to be adding in oxygenate, oxygenation. So I've got a couple of kind of crazy ideas to solve this. Now I'm gonna add two charge of dry hops to the beer. Again, it's Amarillo, Galaxy, and Centennial one ounce, each of those. I'm gonna add one of those dry hop charges in just before the beer finishes fermenting, and then another one a couple of days after that. So I want to be able to add these hops in without actually having to open up the fermenter. Uh, particularly with pressurized fermentation, if you open this up during fermentation, uh, it's just gonna, <laughs> really the crowds is going to get really really high and you can end up with quite a mess so the first way i'm going to add the hops during the fermentation well i've rigged up this what this is are two french press brew bags which i use for brewing my cold brew coffee and i've tied them on to a little bar a little magnet bar from a stir plate and my idea is that i'm going to put these in here and then use this magnet just to dangle them here and they'll just sit there while the beer is fermenting. Then when I'm adding, ready to add them in, I will just remove the magnet. The Whirlpool got down to about 158 Fahrenheit over that course of 20 minutes. Now I have got water running through my plate chiller again to cool it all the way down to yeast pitching temperatures. The yeast for this beer, Yeast 1187, this is Ringwood Ale. I like this one for its fruity esters, so I'm gonna add this in. Now the beer's original gravity is 1066, and also to hopefully give this yeast a faster start, I did run my oxygen wand in here as well. Now before I shut the lid, it's uh, time for my hops balancing act. Well, that seems to be holding. I was able to get the top on uh, and tighten it up. The last thing that I have done is I have connected the gas out of this uh, into a keg and then that's gone into the liquid 
in of the keg and then on the gas out I've put a spunding valve set to 15 psi so I'm effectively going to use my keg as an airlock here and what I'm basically doing is using the CO2 that's generated in this firmzilla in, in this pressure fermentation uh, chamber to remove the oxygen or to push out the oxygen in my keg. And I've also thrown a tilt wireless hydrometer in here so I can keep an eye on the gravity. And as we get close to getting to a final gravity, that is when I'm going to drop this next charge of hops into the beer. See you in a few days. It's about 24 hours later now and uh, the hops are still standing. I kept waiting for them to drop, but so far so good. Now in that 24 hour period, we have got uh, original gravity or current gravity, I should say of 1025. So fermentation is already well on its way. So it's time now to add in these hops. Now by adding hops in during active fermentation, we get to take advantage of a process called biotransformation, which is basically going to use this active yeast to transform some of the hop compounds to really pull out those juicy and fruity aromas and um, flavors from the hops. So let's lower this thing. We're one day further along now, it looks like fermentation is complete. I've got a gravity of 1015. So it's time to add the final charge of Centennial, Galaxy and Amarillo hops. And at this point, I need to find another way to get hops in here without exposing the beer to oxygen. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the little collector tray that sits at the bottom of this fermenter. So you can use this typically for like capturing yeast and, and so forth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with hops and reattach it and then let the beer sink down into this uh, collection jar. So the, the, the one thing that I have to consider is when I pull the hops in, which I'll, I'll do now, this thing is still full of oxygen. So when um, I let the beer come into here, it's going to get oxidized. So what I'm going to do to address that is I'm going to flush this out with CO2. So rather than using these standard bottle caps that come on this, I've added two carbonation caps and these allow me to connect a quick disconnects to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush CO2 that I've been capturing in my keg through one of these and out the other side and hopefully then I'll be able to push most of the oxygen out of this thing. Oh and if by this point you're thinking dude is all of this really necessary? Well you've probably got a good point. You could probably brew a pretty decent New England IPA just in a plastic bucket but I'm trying to do everything I can here to reduce oxygen contact with this beer. This is kind of fun. So because of that spunning valve setup I put on initially, uh, I've got a keg here full of 15 psi of CO2. Um, I am going to use this to push it in to this collection jar here. And then I've just moved my spunding valve out to the other side. And my goal here is now to push the, the CO2 into here and then release what I'm hoping will be mostly air out of the spunding valve. So. I'm all hooked up. Really the only thing I need to do now is to uh, loosen the spunning valve and let some air out. Okay, so now I'm flushing this with the captured CO2. And I'll just leave this running for just a little bit. And now time to release the beer. Six days in and the last stage now is to get this beer into the keg. So I've connected a gas to gas jumper cable and a liquid to liquid. Um, both of these cables are sanitized but they have air in them. So I'm just gonna burp them both just with the gas one. Whew. 
There we go, that's cleared out any sanitizer that was in there. So that's all gas now. And then we can actually hook that onto the gas post there. And this is my liquid. So I just want to just push inside here just to get any um, air out and replace that with beer. Okay, I'm gonna hook that up to the keg too. And now to start the transfer, I just need to lower the pressure in the keg here. All right, lower this, get the gravity going. And let that slowly transfer into the keg. Chill it down, tomorrow give it a try. Day seven, and it's time to taste the beer with Lauren. Hi. Lauren, I believe you've been looking forward to uh, IPA day. I have. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> this one uh, didn't cold crash it, of course, because I want to keep it a little bit hazy. Uh, take a look, see what you think about the appearance of this beer. It's very pretty looking. Um, definitely the haze is there. I can see, well, I cannot see through it. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, no, a lovely, lovely sort of deep golden color to yeah, it. It's really pretty looking. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we get on the aroma. I'm definitely picking up on sort of citrusy, fruity mm -hmm. flavor pretty strongly. Okay. I just wanna drink it. Let's try okay. it, let's try it. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Like really good. To me, um, very fresh, tastes very fresh, very juicy. Um, I'm getting a little bit of sort of like freshly squeezed orange juice and a little bit of grapefruit uh, in the taste. What do you get? So it's funny you say that because my top two favorite IPAs are Hazel Thing by Sierra Nevada and Sculpin by Ballast Point. And Sculpin's grapefruit kind of reminds me a mm. little bit of this. And yeah, I can definitely taste those hints of orange and grapefruit. What I like about it is though, like, cause your typical IPA is quite bitter. Yes. Like at the end, whereas this doesn't have a major, like, bitter taste on right. it. Right, right, absolutely. Um, much more fruit forward than really any sort of hop yeah. bitterness bite. Right? Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell it's an IPA. It's got that fruit zing to it, but it's not, like, some IPAs kind of like potpourri sort of thing, mm -hmm. like super florally. Yep. Whereas this is more of a fruit yep. taste to me. Well. Cheers to this one. Cheers. Well, not bad for a week's effort, right? One week. No, that's not. Ago, this was grain in a bag, and now it's it's beer. So, so. why don't we do more of them? <laughs>